So this mic isn't working, I guess. But anyway, so Frank Q film here. And uh, today we're heading out to Long Island. And um, it's right now like 4.45 in the morning. It's incredibly early and I just got up. And we have about a two to two and a half drive ahead of us if we don't hit traffic to uh, Oyster Bay in Long Island. We're gonna have to pass through um, New York City, um, like Brooklyn, Queens. And um, usually traffic gets pretty bad there. So we're gonna try and avoid that. Um, so our agenda for today is um, after we get there, see some family, and tonight head out and um, try and catch a sunset on film. Um, I don't know exactly where we're going, but um, I heard, I think it's Pot Tobin Beach, she said, my name. I gotta check. But um, for tomorrow, I'm very excited because we're heading out to Montauk and at the end of the island. And um, there's a lighthouse there. Um, it's like a national estate park, um, a nice small town, uh, very similar to the ones that, like beach towns in Jersey. And then possibly maybe stop in the Hamptons and try and get some pictures on the way back. Um, if my cover pulls through for work on Tuesday, I might get another day of maybe some early morning uh, sunrises in uh, Long Island, but I can't promise that yet. Um, so, um, it's very early, and um, let's load up the car and get out, get some gas, get coffee, and hit the road. Okay, this was supposed to record yesterday, but um, got way too caught up, and I need to transition this in video, so recording it today. Anyway, so here's all the stuff I bring. I bring the Volt, I bring another lens for the Volt, but I don't think I'm going to use that much. Then the one that everyone cares about, the Olympus OM-10, with... I also have its 28mm Vivitar lens and its uh, zoom telephoto lens. I think it technically can be both, but it's uh, like 150 like zoom lens. Um, I also have my Elmo um, 8mm here that we're going to use in Montauk. Um, I have my T30 flash, but I honestly don't think I'm going to use that much. And then I have over here my tripod. Okay. And hopefully we can do some good stuff with all this. Oh, before I forget to mention, I also have a great deal of film with me. I've got Portrait 160, which I'm hoping to shoot for the first time. I'm also hoping to shoot this uh, Provia 100. Um, I was going to shoot Ektar, but I only have one roll, and it's been like really hard to get, so I don't really want to shoot that. I have the 50D for the Super 8. I have some Kodak Gold, which I always carry with me, but... um. I only really shoot this if I want 24 exposures, like now. Like, I like Kodak Gold, but um, I like it actually just more because it's 24 exposures and you don't have to be that dedicated to it. And then, of course, Portrait 400. It's going to be a good day.
My first day in Long Island, my family and I headed out to Fire Island in Robert Morse State Park to uh, check out the lighthouse there and uh, try and catch sunset at the beach. I snap a few photos of my uncle walking ahead of us towards the lighthouse. You might notice a few anomalies in the photo. I believe this happened during scanning. It wasn't an issue with my film or the camera itself. I was a big fan of this composition right here, halfway up to the lighthouse, with all the plants around and the museum and the lighthouse all in focus. I think they made for really great photos. I happened to see this plane flying over, and it reminded me of the one from the Cape May video, and I grabbed a picture of it. I love this set of photos, how they came out uh, across from the lighthouse, especially the one with the flag and frame. We headed off the platform to get a better view of the lighthouse from below. I really like these two photos I took from the very bottom of the lighthouse and just the composition that came out of them. As I got closer to sunset, we happened to catch the park rangers lowering the flag for the night. At this point, I finished my first roll of Fortra 400. I had a tough time choosing my next roll to go with, but I decided to stick with Fortra 400 as it got close to sunset. My cousin and I decided to split from the rest of the family to check out one of the beaches and see some of the boats passing by. to get a good couple of shots of what looked like to be a ferry or a charter boat passing through the area. So heading back past the museum, we noticed these massive windows on the side of it, and in the reflection room, we noticed the lighthouse, and I just had to get a picture of this. And I think this is some of the coolest photos I, I don't want to say I've ever taken, but they're definitely uh, some of the more interesting ones I've, I've, that stand out today. Here I just have some more photos I took at Fire Island that just didn't find their own unique home in the video.
during my stay in Long Island, uh, I was actually given my grandfather's camera. It's a Nikon FE. The camera took most of the photos I seen growing up, and uh, you'll be seeing it in a video soon. Okay, so we're here on day two in Long Island, and um, we're about to, in a little bit, uh, head out to Montauk. And um, so from my understanding, it's gonna be about about a two hour drive with traffic. Apparently it's just a one lane road across the whole island, so um, that's gonna be fun. It's currently 8.04 in the morning here. Um, really excited to get out there. Um, I'm wondering if I should just dedicate this whole channel to lighthouses at this point, because um, we failed in our attempt yesterday to see uh, sunset, but we've seen another lighthouse. And we're seeing another one today, and this is gonna be the third lighthouse on the channel, and probably I think the fifth lighthouse I shot. Yeah, the fifth one. Um, fourth, or fifth one. I did Barnicut, Sandy Hook, Cape May, Fire Island, and now we're gonna do Montauk. Yeah, so fifth lighthouse I've taken pictures of. I guess this is just my style lighthouses now, but I'm excited to get out there today. Um, it's going to be really fun. I know it looks a little cloudy here, but it's apparently going to be nice weather over on the other side of the island. Um, we're going to pass through the Hamptons and stuff. Maybe stop there and take some pictures, but I make no promises on that. Um, yeah, so let's get to this. Um, it's just really early. And I'm tired. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay, so this was the worst traffic I think I've ever experienced in my life on the Montauk Highway. Um, literally just standing still for two hours. Um, honestly, it's just mind-boggling how atrocious this trip was to get there. Due to the traffic being so bad, it actually made it hard to stop at all in the Hamptons to take any photos. Um, it just kind of forced me to head all the way to Montauk and just take photos there. But even it, as you see on the side of the streets, I've seen a lot of old classic cars such as Rolls Royces and Mercedes that I really wanted to stop and take pictures of. But if you got off the road, you literally couldn't get back on. So that's the one problem with the area. And I want to head back here during like probably um, February when all the tourists are gone and no one's around. As you can see here too, just how packed it is with tourists. I guess I'm one of them though, so I really can't complain, but I really would like to come at a time when no one's around. And after two hours of sitting in traffic, we finally made it to the end of the island, to uh, Montauk Point. As soon as we reached the road, I fired off a few shots. Unfortunately, it was cloudy this day, and it gave the photos uh, kind of an overcast look. Unfortunately, we found out the tower to the lighthouse was actually closed due to renovations, but we were still able to walk around the area around the tower and take a couple of shots there. I decided for my time at the Montauk Lighthouse and Montauk Point State Park that I would switch to a point of view perspective, point clipping the action camera onto my backpack, and um, just leading with that from now.
So I think the spot in this photo was actually another anomaly from scanning and not the film itself. I want to try and have the film scanned again at a later date and see if there's any differences. I love the beauty of these cliffs off the side of Montauk and just the whole area itself. I hope the next time I'm here to get down to the bottom of those cliffs and take some pictures from the opposite angle towards the lighthouse. So as I finished the roll of portrait from the day before, I decided to switch to Ektar 100. Um, Ektar 100 has actually been one of my favorite films recently to shoot with, and uh, that's honestly why I went with it. I also kind of hoped it would get sunnier, and um, also I hoped that the red tones would be like pulled out of the cliffs, which kind of happened, but it did give a lot of photos like a bit of an overcast to them. So we had this area in the far back of the lighthouse, which is actually the most eastern point into the Atlantic on Long Island, which is just the end of the island. And um, if you actually look at the location tag for it, like on Instagram and stuff, it actually comes up at the end of the world, which it kind of feels like as you're standing there and see the north and the south side of Long Island at the same time, and just nothing into the mess. I actually took this video on my phone right after that. accidentally underexposed these photos because the film speed wasn't set right and I don't mind them but I definitely prefer the box speed photos better that you're going to see in a little bit. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. So if you're a fan of Stranger Things, yeah, that radio tower out there might look familiar to you. When you realize you've been shooting at the wrong film speed the whole for like a good couple minutes. Yeah, I just find the red and tan tones in the box beam uh, shots just a lot better and um, way more satisfying, just the saturation of the red. I love this shot in particular, the top of the lighthouse. So right after this, I happened to notice a uh, US Coast Guard ship passing by and it actually looked to be escorting another ship and I just had to hustle over there and grab a couple shots of it passing by. And I love how these came out with a wide angle shot of the cliff and the patrol boat passing by at the same time with the people at the bottom. Um, these are probably some of my favorite from the trip just because of the chance of capturing that boat and that if you actually do closely you can see the orange off the side of it which is unique to the Coast Guard boats I've seen before. Um, I always get excited for them even though they're not really as special as I make them out to be. They're always off the coast in New Jersey and New York in these uh, rocky shallow waters.
Here for the Coast Guard headed off, we decided to head to the bottom of the hill and check out the view from there. To be honest, the view was actually better at the top of the hill. Um, it just got way more like out of it at the bottom. It was just all the overgrown trees and just into the abyss. But um, they actually made a couple cool shots of the lighthouse from this perspective though. With all people camping on the lawn and taking pictures and stuff. So after exploring the whole area around the top of the lighthouse and the area around the tower, we headed to one of the paths down to the beach to the north side of the lighthouse and check out the view from there. I found from the bottom of this cliff, it gave the lighthouse a bit of a castle on the hill kind of look. And um, a bit of, um, in some of the shots, an old, like, horror movie type look. It kind of reminds me of the uh, house in Psycho sitting up on the hill, to be honest, in this first shot. So apparently you're actually allowed to, um, like normally walk on those rocks and walk around the whole exterior of the lighthouse, but um, they're actually moving them around to, well, actually try and make it safer. Um, I was actually saying here how sketchy it looked and stuff, but um, I hope to do that sometime when they finish it. So I came upon this random, I guess, lawn, or it actually looks like a nicer patio chair just left there for God knows how long. And it just gave off this whole, like, castaway, um, stuck on an island vibe. Like, you just got washed up with just that or something. Um, I don't know. So I had every intention of shooting a Super 8 film at <laughs> Montauk, um, separate from this video, but um, I forgot all there, the batteries that day. I really like these couple shots I snap right here though, of my cousin and this couple I seen further down the beach uh, sitting on the rocks. So after heading up the pathway, we came upon this restaurant with the US flag and the New York state flag out front and I snapped a couple pictures of it real quick. At the back of the restaurant, they had these binoculars facing the bay side of Long Island. And um, I just love how they look with the cliff in the background and the ocean. I also really like this next shot and how it gives off another castle on the hill vibe. So this time I found another map for you guys to show you where we are. Um, we're right at the end of Long Island there, and then you can see all the other lighthouses in the Long Island Sound all the way to Connecticut and Rhode Island. If you actually face the one side with, I think, binoculars, you can see Connecticut. These shots of the back of the restaurant just give me these old vibes that remind me of just like my grandfather's photos of um, like camping and stuff.
At this point, I decided to shoot a film stock I've never shot before. Fuji Provia 100F. That's a mouthful. But I've never shot Provia before. I'm a big fan of Ektachrome, and I was gonna shoot the one roll of uh, Ektachrome I had. But I decided to shoot and give this a try instead, and uh, venture into the world of Fuji um, slide film. And um, this is definitely one of the more interesting films I ever shot. Um, it actually kind of reminds me of like some of the psychedelic like special effects films, but apparently it's a normal film. But you get these very saturated blue and purples with it, and. Um, if you're taking a picture of a sky like this, it gives it almost a um, like crazy look to it. And um, it just gives off these crazy vibes like I've never seen in uh, another film. So now loaded up with a new film, we decided to make our way down uh, the pathway to the other beach there. And um, this beach took me a little bit by surprise. So side note, honestly I don't know if I could have really picked a better film for this day and uh, composition with the blues and um, tans and dark greens. Honestly, I don't think I could have picked a better fit. So what took me so I was such a surprise with this beach was all the rocks everywhere. Um, this may sound a bit naive, but everywhere and every beach I've ever been to, at least in New Jersey or even New York up until this point, was all like um, just sand. So when we got down there, this was just all rocks. And um, it wasn't really fun to walk across yeah. and oh, pretty sketchy to get across, <laughs> um, which we did, but it was definitely sketchy, like, uh, as you can see here. Like put um, I actually want to do a trip up to um, Bar Harbor at some point next year with a couple of my friends. And from my understanding, all the beaches there are like this, and for most part, I guess Maine and Massachusetts, and as you get up the coast. So I guess I better get used to this, but um, yeah, and I guess you might be seeing more beaches of rocks instead of sand on this channel if that happens. Though I love these compositions of the far end of the beach here, um, just all the way out. I think they're just beautiful, and just this whole area was just beautiful to uh, take pictures of. I love these next three particular shots um, with my cousin in them. Just how saturated the blues are and how beautiful the beach looks. So you're gonna start seeing more and more of this purple sand on the beach too. And I just love how that came out in this, um, on this film stock too. And I don't know what causes that. If you know what causes this purple sand here, leave a comment down below. All that I know, it made my photos look pretty dope. Except for the few my cousin decided to walk through. I also love these wide angle shots of the restaurant and lighthouse and the beach all coming together into one composition. Just to give you more of an idea of how much fun these rocks were to walk across. Yeah, it's a random like Adidas you do.
These are next three shots were the last ones I took after leaving Montauk Point for the town of Montauk to take some more pictures there. At this point I finished my roll of Provia and loaded up another new film to me, Portra 160. I'm a big fan of Portra 400 and I decided it was time to give Portra 160 a try because I really do like the slower speed films. I really had a great time snapping some photos from the inlet here, the boats going into the harbor. Um, seen a lot of different interesting vessels, a lot of uh, yachts and um, a lot of um, very expensive fishing boats and some interesting commercial fishing boats too. After seeing the boats for a little bit, we decided to head into the town and uh, check that out a little bit and see if we could see some of the, more, uh, some of the boats more up close. This sign painted in a window of a shop made me laugh really hard. We've upped our standards up yours. This boat, the St. Anthony, um, led to one of my favorite compositions from the whole trip. Um, this next shot of my cousin uh, passing in front of the boat um, is probably my favorite from this whole adventure. And I love this photo too of the ship. Walking a little further, we came across this old Ford in front of an ice cream shop. And I've just fell in love with it and had to snap a couple shots of it in the ice cream shop right next to it. So, without me noticing at this point, the uh, action camera switched into the DHR mode, and um, that's why the rock steady that it normally has on that makes everything so smooth turned off, and that's why everything's so shaky, so I'm sorry about that. I love this shot right here just because of the timing of the small boat, the yacht, and the big paddle boat. I also got a couple shots of other boats before leaving the marina. So as we were leaving Montauk, I came across this place that said best pizza and I just had to stop and take uh, a couple photos because it just made me laugh how they are just the, uh, they named themselves the self-proclaimed best pizza. But I really think it made for a couple interesting shots how the building was by itself in the sand. And then I just had these last two photos post boxes that I couldn't resist taking but I had no way to put them in the video. But they had to go. So that just wraps up this video on our trip to Long Island. Um, follow me on Instagram at FrankieQFilm. Um, please like a couple photos and um, give me a follow on there. And then like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. I hope to keep doing this. Um, I have another video planned for the Nikon FE where we take it out to um, and test it at a flea market around here. And uh, that's going to be pretty interesting, so uh, stick around and check it out, and please like and subscribe.